And to Jesus be the glory and the honor and the praise and God's wonderful people said, Amen, how we love the Lord. Oh, Jesus is so precious. And thank you today for being with me. Thank you for joining me for this wonderful teaching on the atonement. Oh, this is so, so important. So as we begin, let's just pray first. Lord, thank you for your love. Thank you for your word. Thank you for dying on the cross for us. Thank you, Lord, for your love, your grace and mercy. We give you all the glory, all the honor, all the praise. Precious Jesus. Amen. And blessed Holy Spirit be our teacher today. And people said, Amen. Hebrews 9, 22. Let's go to the scriptures. And here's what it says. And almost all things are by the law purged with blood. And without shedding of blood is no remission. One of the most fundamental, central, and vital doctrines of the Christian faith is the doctrine of the atonement. Without the Bible doctrine <clears throat> of the atonement, there is no Christianity. There is no real gospel, but a soul-destroying philosophy. So without the atonement, all we have, without the blood, all we have is a soul-destroying philosophy. Because without the purge, without the blood, I'm going to read that again, and almost all things are by the law purged with blood, and without the shedding of of blood there is no remission there is no salvation there is no forgiveness so when we get the right view on the atonement then we're going to get the right view on everything about our christian life so today many have denied this truth and many more sadly are denying it and that's why i'm dealing with it because people today are questioning the atonement and it's uh, so shocking and sad to even hear what's going on out there because it's that's what's happening and i'm glad today we're talking about it i'm going to show you from the bible how important the atonement is the first thing that the bible plainly teaches is the absolute necessity and importance of the death of our precious lord jesus christ the absolute necessity, the importance of the shedding of his blood. So today in many circles, they focus on the Lord's life. They focus on his character, his teachings, his leadership, even his miracles. I mean, people talk about that all the time. Uh, pastors talk about the Lord's uh, character, the Lord's life, the Lord's teachings, leadership, miracles, and so on. But they're not talking about the blood. They're not talking about the shedding of his blood, about his death, about his resurrection. And that is the heart of Christianity. Okay, it's, it's good to talk about the Lord's life and teaching and, and character and miracles and so on. But to ignore the cross and to ignore the shedding of his blood and to ignore his resurrection, we have nothing left by, but a soul-destroying philosophy, basically, like I said earlier. Because the Bible puts the emphasis on the Lord's death. The death of the Lord is mentioned 170 times, sorry, 175 times. Think about this. The New Testament alone mentions the crucifixion, the death of the Lord, 175 times, just in the New Testament alone. Besides the many, many prophetic references in the Old Covenant. So, so important. Not only are the references to the death of the Lord Jesus so numerous in both 
Old and New Testament. But here's what we are taught in Hebrews chapter 2. Let's go to it, will you? This is of vital importance because today they're questioning it. No one wants to even talk about it in case they offend somebody, you know? So Hebrews 2, and look what it says in verse 14. For as much then as the children are partakers of flesh and blood, he also himself likewise took part of the same, that through death he might destroy him that had the power of death, that is the devil. So only the power of the blood destroyed and destroys the power of the devil. It's not when people teach about the life of the Lord, his character, his teachings, his miracles. No, it's the message of the cross that destroys the power of the enemy. And that's what the Bible teaches. For as much then as the children are partakers of flesh and blood, he also himself likewise took part of the same, that through death, through death, not his teachings, not his character, not his miracles, through death he might destroy him that had the power of death. Even the devil, that's the devil. Wow. So the Lord Jesus became a man for the specific purpose of dying. Think about that. He became flesh. He was born in Bethlehem. He came to earth. He became a man for the specific, for the real purpose was what? Dying on the cross. And he became a partaker of flesh and blood in order that he might die. That's what I just read. And that's what the Bible says. Now, this is, it's uh, the meaning of it is, is as plain as day, frankly. It's, a, it's in God's word. And the word of God actually tells us that the purpose for the incarnation was for the purpose of death. He became a man that he might die as a man for humanity. He became a man that he might die as a man and for humanity. This is the doctrine of the Bible. So let's go to Matthew. Matthew chapter 20 and verse 28. This is such an important teaching. I'm going to keep going with it tomorrow. We need to understand the atonement. And so much more about the cross and why. So he died, the Lord Jesus died for a specific purpose. He said so himself, and here's what, what he said in Matthew 20, 28, even as the Son of Man came not to be ministered unto, but to minister and to give his life a ransom for many. So this is one of the most amazing uh, portions of, 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 of the Gospel of Matthew where the Lord said, even as the Son of Man came not to be ministered unto, but to minister and to give his life. That's how he ministered. To give his life a ransom for many. So he died for that purpose. He came to earth for that purpose. To be a ransom for us. Our Savior. Hallelujah. Now, one of the most amazing scenes, I think, in the, in the, in the, in the New Testament is the, the transfiguration, that of the transfiguration. When Moses and Elijah came back from heaven to earth, they came to earth from heaven to commune with him, to communicate with him. And what did they talk about? Why did they come all the way from heaven? Look what it says in Luke. Let's turn to Luke chapter 9. Now think about, think about what I'm saying here. This is a most amazing uh, portion of the New Testament. In fact, the most amazing scene, I think, in the whole New Testament is this one. It says, And behold, there talked with him two men, 
which were Moses and Elias, or Elijah, who appeared in glory and spake of his decease, which he should, uh, which he should accomplish at Jerusalem. They spoke of his death. That's what it says. So here's Moses and here's Elijah, called Elias in verse 30, who appeared in glory and spake of his death, his decease, which he should accomplish at Jerusalem. So they came from heaven to talk just about one thing and one thing only, his death on the cross. It shows you how important this truth is. And his atoning death was the only subject, we see it here, that took hold of their, of their attention. Now, let's look at First Peter. First Peter. So this is one of the most amazing scenes, like I just said, in the entire New Testament. Look at First Peter chapter 1 and look at verse 10 through 12 of which salvation the prophets have inquired and searched diligently, who prophesied of the grace that should come unto you, searching what or what manner of time the Spirit of Christ which was in them did signify when it testified beforehand the sufferings of Christ and the glory that should follow. So here we are told that the death of the Lord, the cross, was what the prophets looked into. This is amazing. Of which salvation the prophets have inquired, 1 Peter 1.10, and searched diligently. They wanted to know more about his death than anything else. The prophets of the Old Covenant who prophesied of the grace that should come unto you, searching the, the old covenant, wanting to understand, searching what or what manner of time the spirit of Christ which was in them did signify. They were even looking for the time. When would this happen? When the Holy, Holy Spirit, beforehand it says, testified the sufferings of Christ and the glory, meaning the resurrection, that should follow. And the angels themselves, the Bible says, even look into this one truth. Look in verse 12, look what it says. Unto whom it was revealed that not unto themselves, but unto us, they did minister the things which are now reported unto you by them that have preached the gospel unto you with the Holy Ghost, sent down from heaven, which things the angels desire to look into. So what, it, what caught the attention of the Old Covenant prophets? The cross. What did they want to know? The cross. When will, will it happen? What, gets ho what got hold here? What do we see? What is the, the attention that the angels were focused on and wanted to understand? The cross. Because it says, I'll read that again. So, the prophets were searching to know what did the Holy Spirit say about the sufferings of Christ, the resurrection of the Lord. Verse 12, unto whom it was revealed, and not unto themselves, but unto us, because they gave that word to us. They did minister the things which are now reported by, you know, unto you by them, meaning the apostles that have preached the gospel unto you, with the Holy Ghost sent down from heaven which things the angels desired to look into. What things? The crucifixion and the resurrection. So think about this. The prophets, what did, they, what did they really want to know? The work of the cross. The angels, same thing. Let me show something else. Something incredible, in fact. Let's go to Revelation, chapter 5, and verse 8. And here's what we see. So we are told here, think about this, that the choirs of heaven, what do they sing about in heaven? 
all the angels sing about what? His death. Revelation 5, verse 8. Right through verse 12. And when he had taken the book, the four beasts and four and twenty elders fell down before the Lamb, having every one of them harps and golden vials full of odors, which are the prayers of the saints. And they sung a new song, saying, Thou art worthy to take the book and to open the seals thereof. For thou wast slain, <laughs> the cross, and has redeemed us to God by thy blood out of every kindred. The cross. The songs of heaven are about the cross. And it says in every tongue and people and nation, and has made us unto our God, kings and priests, and we shall reign on the earth. And I beheld and I heard the voice of many angels round about the throne and the beasts and the elders. And the number of them was 10,000 times 10,000 and thousands of thousands, saying with a loud voice, Worthy is the Lamb that was slain, the cross, to receive power and riches and wisdom and strength and honor and glory and blessing. The choirs of heaven still today sing about the cross. So, those who don't sing about the cross on earth will never enter heaven to sing about the cross in heaven. Can I say it again? Anyone who doesn't sing about the cross on earth will not make heaven to sing about the cross in heaven because the songs of heaven are about the cross. <laughs> Hallelujah, Lord. You see what I'm saying to you? Without the shedding of blood, no forgiveness, no redemption, no remission. The message of the Bible is the death of Jesus, the resurrection of Jesus. What, has, what, is, what, what caught the attention of the prophets of the Old Covenant? The cross. How about the angels? The cross. What do they sing in heaven about what? The cross. But nobody's singing about, well, I shouldn't say nobody. But a lot of people don't want to sing about the cross on earth. And that's a big mistake. Because when we glorify the cross and the work of the cross on earth, we will glorify the Lord in heaven. What did Paul say? I will glory in the cross. Hallelujah. No, it's so sad. So many pastors today focus on other things. What the Lord said, what the Lord did. I mean miracles, but not the work of Calvary, sadly. Without the cross, there is no Christianity. Now, let me begin talking about, and then I'm going to continue tomorrow. What is the purpose of the cross? What is the purpose of the death of the Lord? So for what purpose did he, did he die? And, and, and shed his blood. The Bible repeatedly tells us that he died as the offering for sin. That is that he, an absolutely perfect, righteous one who lives forevermore, God Almighty, died in the place of unjust men, died in the place of sinners, those who deserved to die. He died for them. He died for those who deserved to die, sinners, ungodly men. He who deserves to live died for those who deserve to die. Hallelujah. So, don't forget what I just said. He who deserves to live died for those who deserve to die. That's our precious Jesus. Isaiah 50, uh, 53 and verse 5, he was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon him, and with his stripes we are healed. How about verse 8? He was taken from prison and from judgment. And who shall declare his generation? 
for he was cut off out of the land of the living for the transgression of my people. For the transgression of God's people was he stricken. How about verse 11 through 12? He shall see of the travail of his soul, shall be satisfied and shall be satisfied. By his knowledge shall my righteous servant justify many, for he shall bear their iniquities. Therefore will I divide him a portion with the great, and he shall divide the spoil with the strong, because he hath poured out his soul unto death, he was numbered with the transgressors, and he bare the sin of many and made intercession for the transgressors. He died for others. And let me just close with what Peter said in First Peter. Let's go to it together, saints. I pray this is really blessing you as it is blessing me just to teach it. I'm so, so amazed by the love of God, to be honest with you. 1 Peter 3.18 For Christ also hath once suffered for sins, the just for the unjust, the just for the unjust, that he might bring us to God, being put to death in the flesh, but quickened by the Spirit. And then verse 1 Peter Two and 24, which I'm sure you all know by heart, or people should know this one too by heart. Who his own self bear our sins in his own body on the tree, that we being dead to sin should live unto righteousness. Wow. By, by whose stripes you are healed. His own self bear our sins in his own body. Thank you, Jesus. I'm going to continue tomorrow because I want to talk to you and continue to teach you on this because I want to show you uh, what the Bible says about the purpose for the, for the cross. Thank you, Lord. Lord, I thank you for your word. I thank you for your love. I thank you for your awesome grace. Thank you, Lord, for your love. I give you the praise. Wonderful Jesus the old hymn by Charles Wesley, and can it be that I should gain an entrance in my Savior's love? Died he for me who caused this pain, and for me into death pursued. He pursued into death for you and I. Amazing love. How can it be that thou, my God, should die for me? Thank you, Lord Jesus. You know what? I think it's time we declare this truth. If others are not declaring it, let's declare it to the world that Jesus died for sinners. That without the blood, there is no forgiveness. There is no remission. There is no deliverance from bondage and from sin. In the cross, be my glory ever till my raptured soul shall find rest beyond the river. You know, when I survey the wondrous cross on which the Prince of Glory died, my richest gain I count but loss, and pour content on all my pride. One of the great hymns says, See from his head, his hands, his feet, sorrow and love flow mingled down. Did ever such love and sorrow meet? or thorns composed so rich a crown. Hallelujah. Blessed be his holy name forever. Well, saints, thank you for being with me today, and I continue tomorrow. Please join me and tell your friends and loved ones and about this and share it with them, because the message today must be heard all over again, shouting it from the housetops. Jesus died and, and rose from the dead, for he only is the Savior. And he's only, the only one, the only way to heaven. You see, people today are questioning, is Jesus the only way to heaven? They just don't even know the Bible. They don't even know why he died. Why he rose from the, from the dead. 
How could it be that someone else could be another way to heaven if Jesus is the only one who died and rose again to prove he is the only way to heaven? Who else died and rose again except the Son of God? Well, thank you for being with me. And now it's time to sow seed into the work of the Lord. Let's, let's get that message to the world. Let's get that message to the world. We're upgrading our studio here because I want to just kind of finish this whole area on this side that's open still. And I want to bring an instrument here so someone can come and play worship while I'm ministering. I'm, I, you know, I like to do monthly Zoom with you, meetings with you, right from this studio and be able to talk to you and you talk to me monthly as partners. I'll be sending you a monthly teaching, by the, uh, sorry, a weekly teaching, I should say that you'll be receiving from us uh, by email. So help me uh, pay for the extra things we need to to put in the studio. We have to put some extra lights and, you know, because I want to be able to walk around, you know, all you see me do is I sit here or I sit with the set next, you know, on the other side, you see me sitting. No, no, I want to be able to move about and walk around, but we need more stuff in here. So as God speaks to you, will you sow your seed today to help me do that? And let's get the word out. Let's get the gospel out. Let's get the message of Jesus out. The full gospel, not just a part of it. The full gospel. Lord, bless them as they give and honor them as they honor you. Increase them mightily, Lord, as they sow into your work. We give you all the praise. And God's people said, Amen and Amen. Okay, you can sow seed right now on the platform you're watching me on and help me do the work we need to add to this tool so I can move about and, and do a little more than I'm doing now. Or you can go to our website and sow your seed, or you can text BHM45777 and come and join us in Dallas December 3rd because I'm celebrating 48 years of ministry on the 7th of December. But we're going to do it all on the 3rd because I turned 70, and plus it's Christmas. And that was the only day we could get at the hotel in in Dallas, the Ritz Carlton was available, amazing, on the 3rd of December. So please go to our website and register, sign up, come be with us. A lot of people are registering. We're gonna have Christmas music and songs, beautiful uh, uh, worship and guests are coming and a four course dinner and I really want you there. Come celebrate the goodness of the Lord with us. December 3rd, Ritz Carlton. Dallas, Texas. So go today to our website and just register. All right, much love. I'll see you tomorrow and tell your friends and loved ones about this teaching that everyone needs to hear, the atonement. I'll see you tomorrow.